negativity you made us hold on to the positive thoughts oh men you boosted us with your smiles oh men you've come so far guiding us to the Inspired both young and old with patience and mindfulness we thank you o oh minla we thank you this gift that you gave us is larger than life to go ahead with confidence and smile and for newness and for loyalty a for activeness you gave us the direction oh men la you boosted us with your smiles oh men la you've come so far guiding us to the right we thank you oh men la we thank you oh men la meena ji and lalit ji we thank you for everything A global namaste to all of you a very good afternoon a good evening or even a very good morning to whichever part of the world you're joining us from Meena Ben and myself Lalit Sora are truly delighted to welcome you all on our centenary episode the 100th episode of Minla Zoom session Minlazum started as you all know during the pandemic at the beginning of March 2020 when the dreaded covid pandemic struck us we wanted to spread love peace educate people motivate people and inspire people globally mirabin and myself came up with this we think an awesome idea to do that didn't sound that awesome at that time but it took off and it took off in such a way that today we are 100 episodes strong we have been through our challenges with zoom we have been through our challenges with the internet and the wifi we have enjoyed the company of people globally we have truly enjoyed all the speakers who have joined us So let me take a moment to express a sincere thanks to each and every one of our viewers. Your continuous support and loyalty means a lot to us. It is because of you that we are able to do what we do, love and share our shows with you. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of our heart for being a part of our community and for making our journey so rewarding. We look forward to continuing to entertain and inspire you in the coming days. Today, as we celebrate our 100th episode, we are absolutely delighted to have a celebrity guest speaker with us on Minla Zoom. none other than the iconic legend mr sandeep soparkar he i would say as we say in gujarati or hindi chand lagava mate aavya che a minla zoom session mate so that's such an honor for us uh, 
And we are truly delighted to welcome him on board. So ladies and gentlemen, whether you're watching us on Zoom Live or whether you're on Facebook or on Instagram, let me introduce today's awesome speaker. Mr. Sandeep Soparkar is an Indian, Latin and ballroom dancer, a Bollywood choreographer, an actor, a columnist, a dance reality show judge, a radio jockey, and a TEDx speaker who holds a doctorate in world mythology folklore from Pacific Graduate Institute in the United States, and also holds an honorary doctorate in performing arts from the National American University. He has been honored with three National Excellence Awards and one National Achievement Award from the Government of India. He is also a recipient of the Rabindranath Tagore Literary Prize for Social Achievement and prestigious Bharat Gaurav Sanman Award given by the Ministry of Culture at the House of Lords in the United Kingdom. The renowned Dance Today magazine in the United States of America rates Mr. Sandeep Parker as one of the top 100 most influential dancers in the world. And the list goes on. This celebrity guest with us has so many credentials to him. And he is, if you look, at, look him up on Wikipedia, oh my God, you will get everything about him. So this is the celebrity guest we have. We had advertised as who is the guest. And Sandeep Ji, we had three people absolutely on spot said, aha, can't be anybody else but him. So we are truly delighted to have you on board. I now hand over the floor to Mrs. Meena Ben Kagram, the lady behind Minla Zoom session, Meena Ben Kagram. And she will continue with the traditional welcome for a celebrity guest speaker. Meena Ben, my dear friend, my sister, my guidance, the floor is yours. Yes, Sandeep, Apro Gujarati Che. That's for you. And this, and there you are. Welcome. Beautiful darling for you. This is so beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's very traditional. Um, Global Namaskar to all. Jambo Karibu. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to all, all our 100, 100 Manayaki Mia Moja Zoom session. Welcome to the Flamingo City of Napuru, where Lake Napuru is um, famous for wildlife and flamingos. Count the one where world famous fastest runners ride, the fastest first marathon runner Kipchoge Piano, Eldu Kipchoge, Faith are born. We also have first African James to climb Mount Everest. Recently, we have very old Hyrex Museum. World famous crater too. Nakuru is the fastest progressing city in the world. It is city of opportunity. My cute cousin, Dr. Lalit and myself, Minzum, are super excited to welcome you all and here who have joined in Minla Zoom and on Facebook Live. Miss you, welcome to our esteemed speaker, Mr. Sandeep Soparkar. Can't wait to listen to you, your inspirational and motivational speech. My special welcome to Apra Gujarati Bhai and proud Ajay Bhai and proud mother Rani Ben. Ladies and gentlemen, baby and buana. Let me introduce to you our backbone of this session, MC 
Mr. Lalit Soda. He is a professional speaker, chiropractor, and author. He is a re recipient of many awards. He has been awarded Marwa Journalist Award and, on, and Lohana Mahaparisa Journalist Award. And do you know, ladies and gentlemen, what the, he begged recently? Humanitarian Award at London Parliament. Congratulations. Lalit, over to you. Can't hear. Can't hear you, Lalit. Yeah, there we go. You muted me. That's why I can't hear. You can't hear me. <laughs> <laughs> so Minaben, thank you very much for that, uh, for all that acknowledgement. I truly appreciate it. Now, Sandeep Ji, this is yours. We are so, so, so delighted, I may say that, that we are having you on our session. So I'm going to give you a couple minutes for whatever you want to say before we engaged into a, a, a question-answer session with yourself. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me on your 100th episode. It just feels absolutely wonderful. So Lalit Ji and Meena Ma'am, thank you. It's a privilege to be on this 100th episode of you guys. I've always been hearing about this uh, session that you've been having for the past so many years. And it feels privileged that I'm being now a part of it as well. So thank you for making me a part of it. It's our pleasure. And as we say, truly delighted. This is a centenary episode for us. So it will definitely go down in history for us uh, that this was the episode where our superstar came with us. So thank you for honoring us too. So before we go ahead, we have some wonderful guests who have actually joined us. And I think I'm going to mention a big hello to them. We have our super guy, Mr. Mahendra C. Jadeja. Dadaji. Oh my God. Uh, hello, sir. Good to see you. Thank you for joining me. We'll in. give you a minute to talk afterwards, Mahendra Bhai, but please hang on. And we also have our legend, Dr. Batra. He's also joined us all the way from India, and he is a constant and a keen supporter of Minla Zoom session. So welcome, Dr. Batra, to you too. One so of our wonderful to have you on, our on this show, sir. Thank you so much for joining in. Yeah, thank you. So we engage into this wonderful session with Mr. Sandeep So Parker. Oh, Dr. Batra is already there. Hello, Dr. Batra. Hello, it's so wonderful, so wonderful to have been part of this hundred. I've been watching this entire growth for the last so many years. You know, you really, really hit the ball out of the park, as they say. You know, hit a six with every episode that you have, and now you've hit a century. So <laughs> it's really amazing. And when what better person to get that, my friend Sandeep? to actually Thank celebrate you, this momentous uh, occasion. So all the very best. God bless. And here's wishing you a very, very quick double. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Bhatra. Thank you very much. Mahindra Bhai will be getting you in just a few minutes. Uh, thanks. Sandeep Bhai, we are going, I'm going to call you Sandeep Bhai. Sandeep Ji is going to alternate <laughs> between Gujarati, Hindi, and <laughs> Mr. Sandeep Bhai is in English. Yeah, so Absolutely. We'll, continue, we'll continue that journey. <laughs> First of all, my wonderful uh, friends who are here, we all welcome you on board. Now, this is where I was sharing stories with a lot of them saying, who is Mr. Sandeep Soparkar? Well, let's find out. Let's find out about his journey. Let's find out how he comes from such a humble beginning. And we say to his parents, Colonel, Lieutenant Colonel Ajay Bhai Soparkar and Mother Rani Ben Soparkar, who are apparently also joined in there. So we welcome you. Uh, and this is the son that they had. Now, Sandeep Bhai, tell us, how did this begin? Tell us your little journey of X number of years I'm not going to mention the number of years, but tell, <laughs> <laughs> tell us, tell I'm us only what the journey has been. I'm What's only that? 25. I'm only 25 and 25 forever. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I think I credit, give the entire credit of my dancing life and my creative mm -hmm. life to the army background that my father comes from. And my grandfather was in the army. My father was in the army. <laughs> So I think it's all because of that, you know, this, whatever I'm doing today has all happened because of that particular time that I spent in the army, army culture. Because way back in the 1960s, uh, when, when we would go to the army mess, they would have all these uh, 
Latin American ballroom dances being played, live music, live waltzes, live tangos, live cha cha, all of them was live. Of course, today it's all changed, and a lot of Bollywood music has come into picture. But that time it was only ballroom dancing. And I still remember at the age of five, walking into the army mess with my mouth wide open, looking at these wonderful, beautiful ladies in the saris and men in the uniform dancing the foxtrot in front of me. And I looked at my grandmother and I said, what are they doing? And she said, they are dancing the foxtrot. Would you don't want to dance with me? I said, yes. And that was my first dancing step at the age of five. And it's now been so many years I have been dancing uh, and practicing ballroom dancing. And it just feels absolutely amazing. <laughs> From the age of five. Absolutely. So it's only 20 years. It's not that long. It's, it's not. Years. It's just, just been 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's when it all started. Though, but, yeah. uh, but obviously, obviously with this, we say that there was some inborn hidden talent that was in you that inspired you to do this. Can I say, am I thinking on the right line there? I would say, you know, we all, I believe that we all have the talent. We all can dance. We all uh, are born dancing. If you ever look at a child that's born, we always are born moving our legs, moving our hands. Our eyelids are dancing. Our breath is dancing. Our blood is dancing in our body. The nature is such that we all dance. It's just that as we start growing, we are told we can't dance. We are told that we are very stiff. We are told that if a man is dancing or you're doing a girly thing, these are all society norms that make us not do what we want to do. Sometimes we curve our desires because we are told we should not do a certain thing. And I'm fortunate enough that my parents never did that to me. And they told me, you can follow your heart and do exactly what you want to do in life. And uh, it's, it's, it's difficult from a family of all army background to tell your child to not, for, to not do a particular set way of, of going. Though I did face that in my, in my teenage, teenage for sure. But later when my parents realized that I, I was in love with my art form, they allowed me to fly. They allowed me to do what I wish to do. And today I'm very happy to say that they're fully supportive of what I'm doing. That's amazing. That's very true. But on that, uh, may I ask you a personal level question? Obviously, as you brought this topic up, saying that it wasn't all uh, by society, it says it's not a man thing to do. It's only society that's shaping that. But you fought your way through and you did it. Did you, did you face any obstacles? Did you face any, uh, did you get any comments on saying, oh, why are you doing this? Your father is in military. Why are you doing this? Did you get that? Oh, a lot of it. Yes. And honestly speaking, the first, first um, setback which happened to me was from my father itself. Because when I was dancing, he was fine if it, as far as it was a hobby. But as soon as I told him I want to t take dance more seriously, he was, not, he was not in favor for it. He said, dance bhi kar lena. I said, dance bhi mm. nahi, dance hi karna hai. Wow. So he, he was a bit surprised and he said, you know, my great grandfather was doctor to Mahatma Gandhi. My grandfather was, was in the army. He was the first gynecologist in the Indian army. My father was in the army. My uncles are in the army. That's, we are like full armed forces background family. And suddenly from where is this, you know, so-called dance ka bhoot that's coming to you? You do, do your job. You do. You have, I've done my education. You can follow your education. Do whatever you want. You can keep dancing as well. But I think I would give, then I would give credit to my mother and to my grandmother who finally convinced my father that I should, you know, be allowed to do what I want to do. And then, of course, a um, lot of other cousins and friends were like, if you want to dance, it can't be a profession. It's more woman-dominated profession, you know, and what's going to be your income coming in every month? What's going to be, you know, how are you going to look after your family? You can't be... Some of them said you can't be shaking your ass and looking after your family. So there were, there were many kind of, uh, you know, people wanting to say not to do it. Well, I also understand that, yes, the profession of dancing can be a bit difficult sometimes if you're not going to achieve a certain level. It can be difficult in terms of money as well. It can, it can have a lot of its issues as well. 
But I guess uh, sometimes you just need to follow your heart because though it might be on the left hand side, but it's always right. So I guess, I guess uh, uh, people, people did help me. And I also believe, you know, Mr. Lalit, that the blessings of your elders is a very important aspect of life. Because if you have that in your life, it can take you to heights. When my father said he was not supportive, I did not leave my house and run away. Like I've seen so many people I see nowadays who say, I've left my house, I've left my parents, I've fought with them and I've come to you know, make a career into acting or dancing. I don't believe in that. I believe bade budon ka aashirwad jo hota hai wo aapke sar pe jab rehta hai na tabhi insaan aage badh sakta hai wow you have to their support as a backbone with me is very very important even till today when i am losing out on a project or i am winning a project or i am winning something or i am losing on something it is they who who i go and confide to if they would have not been there i don't think i would have been able to sit here and chat with you today because it's only because of their blessings and their positivity that any child can go ahead in their life so please whoever is listening this to, to this conversation please don't fight with your parents please don't fight with your grandparents and say you know i'm going to leave you and go away to follow my dreams because your dreams might get fulfilled but there is no point in fulfilling those dreams if you don't have a loved ones with you wow can we give a huge huge round of applause to that points and the g because i'll tell you what you've hit the nail on the head and this is a strong message from our inspiration motivational session that comes out today is gratitude to your parents begins at home so absolutely thank you for hitting that so hard and may i also say that our very first episode we had on minimalism session was a lovely lady rujuta divakar she came on board and you know what a celebrity nutritionist she said the same thing it's bade buzurg ke aashirwad se jo unka celebrity nutritionist ka status hua hai so it was because of them and today we are so delighted to say her mother her mother has also joined us on our zoom session so big namaskar to rujuta's mom a big namaste from minla zoom session to you this is the indian values that we are installing in our children so you hit the point on the head so i thank you for that that's so sweet so sweet wonderful that goes actually on to my next question to you i have a long list of questions i don't think the time is going to be enough but we're going to try and zoom through as many questions as we can so sandeep ji one of the things that i have uh, read about you and spoken to you about is you looking after so many adopted children and you're trying to give them a better future a, a, a life that they can grow with and be independent tell us a little bit about your philanthropy work that you do with them well it all began with uh, you know my my family we have a lot of adopted uh, children and it began from there i was in school and i was witness to adoption in my house not once not twice but many a times and that is when i told my mom that you know when i get to an age when i'm financially and emotionally more strong i would want to look after as many children as i can that is when i went and adopted my first son and then recently i have adopted a second my second son as well but apart from that yes i have been doing lot of work with adoptions and with child care uh i am the cause ambassador for adoptions in india and i just feel that you know every child requires a good home it's not important it's a rich home but what's important is a home that has value system that appreciates culture that appreciates religion any kind of religion and most importantly is filled with love and affection it's okay to have a middle class uh, education background it's okay to have a government school background what's but what's more important is you have a family you have love your affection because that's what makes a person beautiful that's what makes a person a complete person and that belief of mine made me go ahead and do what i always been doing that's amazing giving that wonderful life to children and how many if i may ask how many children currently are you sponsoring or supporting in in such manner so um the 2000 girls that i have adopted 
in a village and uh, complete care we are taking from food to education to sanitization to their livelihood everything 2000 were girls and now recently just last week we have also started to adopt 5000 uh, children mix of boys and girls in another village here close close to uh, mumbai so total 7000 children wow that is a huge significant <laughs> there's a lot of money as well going but i think more than that what's most beautiful is when i go to meet them oh my god i can't stand straight i've just been pushed everywhere everybody's hugging me and kissing me and holding me i think that moment is the most precious moment of my life amazing so again we learn from this particular episode about giving back to the community sandeep ji did you ever at age 10 11 18 when you were being questioned about uh, how are you going to earn a living by shaking your rear end okay right? and then in this position at this time in your life supporting 7000 children did you ever dream about that <laughs> well, I did dream about it. Yes, I would say that whatever I am doing today, I have been dreaming about it all my life. And I think one must do that because once you dream something, you wake up and you achieve it. And if you stop dreaming about it, you will not even know how to achieve it. So it's very important to dream and it's very important to wake up and try to go achieve those dreams. Sometimes we just get lazy and we just keep dreaming and we don't do anything about it. So here is a mix of both. So you must, um, you know, they, they say that you must in, uh, manifest what you want to do. And I truly believe in that. So when I'm sitting and doing my yoga, my meditation, or I'm dancing, I'm manifesting what I want to do tomorrow, what I want to do a few years from now, a few months from now. And fortunately, fortunately, thank God, whatever I've manifested has come true. That's amazing. That's the power of the universe you're bringing in, the power of manifestation, the power of your thought. And one thing you said, Thank God. Sandeep Ji, who is God for you? Well, to me, when we say God, I mean just to be a good human being. Okay. That to me is godliness. That to me is, is the way to reach to a supreme power who is taking care of us. Because if you are a human first and being compassionate is what your motto in life is, I think the way to reach there becomes clean and clear. Amazing. And is there a name you give to the superpower or God or anybody? I don't give a name to the superpower at all. But I, because I don't believe that it should be a particular religion or a name given to, to, to the power. I think my dance is the power. Uh, to me, my dance is my God because that makes me look within. That looks me, it makes me look above. And that is what is my channel, my temple. Like I say, my, my body and my dance is my temple and I pray through it. And I pray through it to, to something which is, which, is, which is the energy. I'm not calling it Christ. I'm not calling it Krishna. I'm not calling it Shiva. I'm not calling it Allah. I'm calling it a power which takes care of all of us, whoever we are, wherever we are. And to me, my dance is my God. Wow. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. And, and that actually takes me to my next question. Looking at you, a very striking personality. You see Sandeep So Parker walking on the street, you can't miss him. You recognize him right away. And one of his recognizing a point is his wonderful tilak that he does. So tell me, tell me about this tilak that you do. You know, a lot of people think it is it's it's to do with spirituality. But yes. honestly speaking, it is not to do with spirituality. It is to do with a blessing which I'm carrying with me of one of the renowned dancers of our country, Padma Vibhushan, Dr. Sonal Mansingh. Uh, and once we were um, almost talking about 15 years back, we were at an event and we got discussing, started talking about dancing. And uh, she told me, you know, I've had a failed marriage. I've had many relationships, but I've not had any child. If I had a son, he would have been like you. And she put this for me. And to me, she's the epitome of dance in our country. She's Navaratna of dance by, by Modi ji. And I think the, her knowledge in, in the field of art and Sanskrit and life is so amazing. And she calls me her son. It's, it's like a blessing to me. And that was a day. And today, it's been almost 15 years. I carry this every day as a blessing of Dr. Sonal Mansingh. And I'm so fortunate that my relationship with her 
is just like a mother and son. And till today, when we meet, we we uh, share that bond. I think that's what is important. The dance is na, wo logon ko jodta hai, todta nahi hai. And I think this tilak that I am putting is a symbol of the bandhan, is a symbol of the bridge that dance can create for people. So we open doors. Uh, dance can open doors, and that's what it has done. Wonderful. Wonderful. That's such a, a different significance of the tilak that you're wearing. And immediately, as you're wearing the tilak, the first thing would be it's on a spiritual basis. But I'm so thankful that you clarified the reason as to why you're wearing it. It yeah, is it's not spiritual. It is it is more emotional basis than not on spiritual basis. And I think when we have emotions attached to anything, it becomes spiritual. Yes. yes. Because so, we start thinking from the heart. We speak from the heart. We do everything from the heart. So when emotions come into picture, the way to spirituality becomes extremely easy. That, that's that's so true, and 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 it helps you gain that strength and continue with that. Absolutely, correct. Now I know one thing. I've had a message from Mr. Jadeja Mahendra Bhai. He's uh, going to be going for a meeting very shortly. So if he's still on, can we just give him a quick spotlight, Milavan? And uh, as you know, Sanidji, that Ali is controlling everything from there, from Absolutely. the Absolutely. There we go. Uh -huh. Hello, Dada Ji. Kem Cho. First, first class. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Lalit Ji and uh, Minaji, for having me on. And uh, it is my really, really honor. Normally, I sometimes struggle to come on. Uh, and, I, and I'm so fortunate that on the 100th episode, it's like a century time to meet my, you know, really, really one of the good friend I ever come across in a, in a Bollywood or whatever I can say. The day I met, uh, you know, the Sandeep boy. And since then, I'm, I'm talking about we met in India, we met in, uh, you know, England, we met in Switzerland. But his, uh, you know, attitude towards not me, but everyone remained sane. And I'm so proud to uh, get connected with him that anytime you pick up the phone, he's there for you. One thing what I learned about it, this man has never ever worried about, uh, you know, that, you know, there are lots of, you know, the, in industry, you will see people are diluted towards, you know, the uh, money making, you know, exercises. But this is the only man I come across where money is a secondary. What he wants is a if you ask him to perform uh, for the one particular episode, whether it's a one people there or, or 10,000 people there, his attitude will never ever change for the, that particular program there. So I wanted to salute to him. He's, you know, the, the, such, a, such, a, such, a, such a great man. And I'm so lucky to have him. And I tell you, once people get to know about Sandeep Bhai, he's a superb. And I'm, I did not know Sandeep Bhai that, you know, the program is uh, also Mina Ben is uh, talking about the Nakuru because my my missus born and brought up in Nakuru, you know, and I heard about Nakuru. I've never been to Nakuru there. But once we, we started uh, our airline, hoping to start very soon, we're going through the sort of like a severe uh, uh, kind of, uh, you know, the process whereby new airline takes longer time there. But our idea is to cover the, you know, the India and, and Africa. And hopefully the Nakuru is, uh, you know, this is a key part of it because we try to, you know, that connected to the tier two system. So on that the note, uh, I know there are lots of people who wanted to talk about it. But I wanted to say thank you, Sandeep. I'd love it to see you. Uh, thank you, sir. I... Thank you so much. It's wonderful to see you here on the show. Thank you. Yeah. And since I've seen you from day one till today, you have never ever changed. So good luck to you. And, <laughs> and, and may, may God bless you. And, and, and keep on the you. good work. Thank you. Thank you, sir. He remains, you. Mahindra Bhai, he remains 25 always. Yeah, forever. Yes, the, next you, will turn, the next yeah. year I will turn 60, but yeah, I'm still 25 forever. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. So everybody. he's given it away. Sandeep Bhai, he's <laughs> given it away to everybody. <laughs> Mahendra Bhai, just stay on board. 
Let me tell you a little bit about this young gentleman. He's the person who introduced the International Men's Day at the Houses of Parliament, and he introduced it on the 19th of November, which happens to be my birthday. So uh -huh. not only do I qualify for International Men's Day, but it's a celebration of my birthday. So my goodbye, thank you for that. <laughs> thank you. That's right. Thank you. Good, good, good. Wonderful, wonderful journey of inspiration, motivation. See, Sandeep Bhai, you have actually touched people's hearts, not only in India, not only locally, uh, but internationally. And this Thank is where you. they say, if you're going to leave a legend, leave it this way, where you touch people's heart. People want to come and talk to you because of the good deeds of the good karma that the one above is making us do. So wonderful achievement there. So once again, a big, big thank you for doing that and being a human. You know, I, must, I must talk about what just now Jadija sir was talking about the money part into dance. When I told my grandfather that I'm going to be starting, you know, teaching dance and I'm going to start choreographing for things and for events and festivals. Uh, my grandfather said a very wonderful thing to me. He said, uh, you know, in Gujarati, we, we talk about various things in, in terms of business, right? So he said, dance karna hai, achhi baat hai, but iska dhanda mat banana. Yeah. And I think that time when he said to me, I was like, okay, you know, he's just speaking, grandfather is just talking, you know, to the grandson. But after a few years, when I was doing my, 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 my dancing, I started to realize what he meant by dhanda nahi banana. So it's difference between following your passion and making your passion into a money-making profession. So yes, passion is alive. Money we have to make, we all have to make. But there's a fine line which is very important to draw and understand what is a good thing, what's a bad thing. I remember in 2008, I, the, my dance was going full on. I was choreographing so many films and stage shows after stage shows. I was sitting with my mother and I was telling her, you know, um, how excited I was to travel to different countries and do different shows. So she told me one thing. She said, it's great you have bought a car for yourself. It's great you have bought a house for yourself. It's nice to see you buy all these luxury items. But what are you giving back, Sandeep? And that one word, what are you giving back, Sandeep, stayed in my mind. And that year, I'm so happy she said that to me because in 2008, I launched my, my dance program called Dance for a Cause. And Mr. Lalit, we did the first show of it at the biggest dance platform in the world, which is the World Economic Forum in Davos in Switzerland. I had Bill Clinton sitting in front of me. I had Nicholas Sarkozy sitting in front of me watching my show. And I was talking about Save the Tiger. And that was the day Till today, every year, we do Dance for a Cause shows all over the world. We are in UK, we are in USA, we are in Dubai, in Singapore, in, in, in Canada, in so many countries. And of, of course, in India as well. We have been performing this everywhere. And I think it was that one line which she told me. What are you giving back, Sandeep? It's great to have Gucci and Armani and Prada with you. But what are you giving back? And I'm thank God she said that to me because that's what helped me. One more thing, which my grandfather told me as well. He said, Talwar or Top, Yud Jeet Sakti hai, Lekin Tumhari Kala or Kalam, Yud Chhed Sakti hai. And I think those lines, till he is no more, may his soul rest in peace. But his lines till today keep moving in my body. Because that made so much sense to me. That my kala jo hai, wo yudh chhed sakti hai. Which means my dance can ignite fire into people's minds and hearts and improve the society. And that's the reason why my dance for a cause, uh, I, I kind of, you know, dedicated to both of them. That's, I love the statement you've used that says, talwar or top yudh kara sakti hai. Yud jeet sakti hai. Jeet sakti hai. Lekin kalam kala, or kala. kala ka, yud chhed sakti. Chhed sakti hai. How nice. That talent you have, what you're going to utilize it for. Super. Absolutely.
a big respect to your grandfather for saying that comment. I've noted it down because it's a worthwhile comment to note down. And Sandeepji, let me tell you one thing. These are the things that have been picked up on our inspirational, motivational sessions. All you're just telling me, I mean, this is not pre-planned or we didn't discuss this, but this is such an inspiring comment that you're making for the audience to listen to. And, and this this is just being our hundredth episode is becoming even more and more successful with our mission that we had about spreading inspiration and motivation. So thank you for doing that for us. Thank it's you. very, very kind. Now that takes me to uh, some other questions that I had. You talked about dance for a cause, and that was one of my questions that was going to come to you. So how many shows would you say for dance for a cause that you have performed? And what are you using that for? What's the cause? Well, um, how many have I performed? I haven't even lost counts, to be honest. Because every year we are performing uh, one, like we set a dance drama for that one year for a particular cause and then we perform it all over the world. Sure. The same, same, same cause we perform all over the world. So we've been doing many, many shows. And I think the most important part to that is to create awareness about that particular cause. So be it acid attack, be it domestic violence, be it care for the elderly, be it adoptions, be it cancer, be it HIV. There are so many that we have been doing. And right now what I'm doing uh, this year, we are doing promoting uh, uh, Stop Flower Wastage, which is a very interesting cause. And I'm launching it end of this month. Uh, so it's very interesting stuff. Where we, you know, in India, especially, we offer flowers to uh, at mosques, at temples, and weddings. There's a big flower decorations everywhere. All that is fine. But what happens to the flower after that? Right? And yes. What's happening? So there are many NGOs who use those flowers to make stuff with flower waste, including agarbattis and candles and so many more things. So that's the cause I'm promoting that, yes, flowers are beautiful in our life and we offer them to our gods and goddesses and to our, our loved ones uh, during functions and events. But what happens to it after that? Wow. So I think it's, it's an interesting, you know, sometimes we just don't realize certain things. And I think through Dance for a Cause, we are bringing in that awareness into people's minds. We are creating uh, opportunities for people to work with those NGOs as well. We are raising funds for them. Uh, now we even have support of the United Nations with us as well. So it's the whole dance for a cause has taken a complete new new turn. And uh, in the government of India gave us a national excellence award for it. Uh, the Bhutan government issued a stamp for us uh, honoring dance for a cause. Yes. So I think uh, it's it's something which is which is it was very it was my my project to begin with, but today I think it's become a project of everybody else as well. That's outstanding. You know, what people don't even think about it, what happens to those flowers once they've been used. And especially where flowers are predominantly easily accessible, people do use it in so much of a large quantity for weddings, for pujas, and for other occasions. What happens to those? Wow, that's an amazing, amazing uh, uh, cause that you would be performing for. Very nice. In fact, it just reminds me, you know, we'll put you into connection with some amazing people all over the globe because today we have people joining us from Kenya, from Dubai, from the United States, from Canada. I can see some of the names that have already appeared over here. So this is something that I'm sure an international cause that people would love to. One of the gentlemen from Kenya, Mr. Hasu Radia. He's also on with us today. A very phenomenal businessman, a big entrepreneur in Kenya, and somebody who we definitely connect with and make sure the projects move forward. Oh, it would be wonderful. I haven't performed in Kenya and I would love to go there and perform. Yeah, that would be wonderful. Yeah. Now, in talking about performances and everything, I have a question for you. Um, you know what? We, I had read up a few things and it said in the literature that you were actually invited to perform at the wedding of our hopefully future king, but currently Prince William and Kate. Um, and that offer was, you declined it. I declined because I had an accident and I injured my knee and I had to could not go and it became a big controversy. And people were like, why would he refuse an offer like this? Which is the fact I did refuse it because to me, my health is most important part. And I don't think anything in the world is more important than your health. And we should never, uh, you know, 
forget our health for for money or for fame because a good health is what's going to take you ahead there's a very beautiful shloka which says vaya mat labte swastham dirga yusham balam sukham arogya parmam bhagyam swastham sarvarth sadhanam which means that good health is the most important thing in life for you and it can give you dirga ayu bal and everything that along that comes comes because of your good health and all the ways will open for you if your health is good and i still believe in that and i don't care if i refuse even shows even today because for me uh, as a dancer i want to dance all my life and uh, for me my health is most important wow that's that's amazing because it doesn't explain why you had declined the offer and one would constantly be thinking what a amazing offer to go to why would one want to decline it but look if you are not able to perform to your 100% capacity why would you do it and you're so right so thank you for sharing that that was a curious question that even i had while i was searching some material about you so you really really um, clarified that very much my next question comes to you over here is that tell us a little bit about your debut film as an actor and the title was i'm not a porn star nazar sambal ke <laughs> tell us tell us about it uh, sandeep ji you know that the 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 name is very controversial i'm not a porn star and people thought it was a movie and the posters were all very very uh, you know seductive and sensual uh, but the story is a one a very, a very interesting story it talks about not to judge people by the way they look and uh, most of the time we are judging people with the way they are dressed up or the way the kind of work they do and we are not interested to even know how they are as people and the movie is about not to judge people and i think it's a wonderful message it says i am not a porn star nazar sambhal ke because what's important is your nazar aap logon ko kis nazar se dekhte hain kis nazariye se dekhte hain wo hi decide karta hai aapka kis tarah se unke unke prati approach hoga so it becomes very important and that's the message the film has it got a great opening at the la uh, la film festival at the world film festival the movie did pretty well and uh, though it's it's not a high budget film like most of the bollywood films but i think the, the message was special for the festivals and we have sent the movie to so many places and it has done really well that's that's outstanding uh i i got a couple messages saying that there is a lot of noise coming from my end can you hear that guys yes sorry about that um it's quite yeah. quiet over here there were a couple incidences because i'm doing this session from our clinic and i know sometimes the door can open and shut and make a little bit of noise so apologies for that but is there any noise coming at this stage now no no okay and you know this is the thing we are on a commercial road with these properties and somebody is drilling from the other end trying to get some work <laughs> done it's saturday afternoon and they're doing a building job and it's the easter weekend so guys i'm so sorry about that uh if if there's too much noise please give me give me another message and we'll try and see what we can do so apologies on that side okay sandeep ji the question keeps coming and coming and this is what personally i would want to hear from you and my question personal question to you would be is do you read any inspiring books or do you follow any inspiring authors or personality well i read a lot of kabir dohas i read a lot of sanskrit shlokas i read a lot of mythology books and mythology books are superbly inspirational and when i say mythology books i not only just talk about indian mythology i speak about the world mythology be it gorani mythology be it african be it chinese be it japanese so many of them and i think that's what inspires me the most in life and that's what even made me realize that we are the ones who divide people because of the of the areas we belong to or because religion that we belong to but finally all the gods and goddesses are just the same and we all have our fears we all have our tears we all have our happiness and they all are just the same it's we divide them because we feel we need we must divide them otherwise it's all just exactly the same wonderful so you're saying that mythology inspires you absolutely wow 
That's great. I got a message on the chat box, Mr. Manoj Rupereya. Yes, please put a question on the chat box. I will take that question and address it to Sandeepji. Um, so yes, by all means, you can you can put your questions on the chat box. If there's a burning question, put it there. I will make sure I'll get to it and uh, address that question for you. So Sandeepji, that's amazing. Mythology, and you said any form of mythology, uh, whether it's uh, Quran, Gita, the Bible, anything that gives a good inspiration to you. Perfect. You've been working on many, many projects. You've been working on your dance for a cause. You've been working for movies. You've been choreographing. What is your next upcoming project? A lot of theater projects I've been doing now, which I think is very inspiring mm -hmm. because um, though the I think the reach for a movie is a lot more than, than theater. So movies anyway keeps happening because Bollywood films... But in Bollywood films, you can't uh, have a proper message out in terms of dancing because it is to do with the movie and what's happening in the film song and the film dancing and things like that, which is quite uh, commercial in so many ways. Whereas for stage, we can work on something that we wish to work for. So currently, I'm doing this very interesting project on pedophilia where we talk about uh, child sexual abuse and uh, through dancing, we're explaining as to what happens and how it should be you know, stopped and things like that. And we are also working on a very interesting theater production called Death Conqueror Karna, which is the life of Karna shown through dancing. Uh, so it's a very interesting project. I'm recently also working on this one called Namami Gange with Hema Malmiji, where she plays Ganga and I'm playing Shiva. So we uh, are talking about the story of the beautiful river Ganga and how we must keep it clean. So there are many, many theater projects and many uh, you know, projects which are for, for stage because that stage life is different to a, a camera life. And uh, I personally believe that through, through stage, you can have a lot more messages coming out. And through cinema, sometimes the message becomes difficult to go out. Wonderful. That's a lot of stage performances that are coming up. One that caught my eye, well, actually, second one is a question, but the one that you just mentioned about the dance theatre in relation to Karna, the life of Karna, is that what you're saying? That's right. There's a book called Mrityunjay, um, uh, which is a very famous Marathi novel. I don't know if any of you have read that. And it's called, even it's been translated into different languages as well. So this is an English adaptation of uh, Mrityunjay. And it's a dance drama presentation of life of Karan and his, his life, his lover, his wife. It's all about his, his part of it, his side of the story from the Mahabharata. And is this theater already on and playing in India? And yeah, so we did a couple of shows for it. And uh, now, yeah, the shows are going on. Okay. Any international shows with that? Are you bringing not it to London? Yet. Not as oh, yet. I would love to bring it to London. But as of now, I've only been performing in India. Sure. In fact, that's one of the questions our Manoj Bhai Rupa from the United States has mentioned. He would love to connect with you. He would love to host you for some events over there. So we're going oh, to try sweet. and connect with you and Manoj Bhai. Manoj Bhai, if you, can, if you don't mind, send a uh, WhatsApp message to Meena Ben with your personal telephone number and we'll make sure Sandeepji gets it and you guys can communicate together. If you can do that, that would be wonderful. Or an email address on the chat box, that way we can pick it up, rather than sending a phone number on the chat box because it's open to everybody. Uh, you may send the telephone number to Mina Ben, if that's okay. Or myself, whoever you uh, got the flyer from. So that will be good, yeah. So in one way or another, if the United States can host you with some kind of an event, that would be wonderful. Superb. Looking forward to it. Thank yeah. you. So my question was about the theatre, was about this theatre that you're doing with Hema Maliniji, Ganga. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about it. You said it's all about cleansing the river Ganga and, and what more? You know, we, uh, we pray to river Ganga, right? Yes. Ganga, Ganga Jal is very important for our life. But if you actually go and see the Ganga, you'll be shocked because it is extremely dirty. And uh, it's a beautiful story which Hemaji has created where we talk about how Ganga came down uh, on earth and why she came here and how beautiful and how pure she was and how she has seen yuga after yuga. Be it Treta Yuga, be it Ram Yuga, be it uh, you know, um, um, Mahabharata Yuga. She has seen it all. 
and she's even seen this kali yoga and how this pure uh, woman ganga is now very impure and sh- should she go back yeah is the question or should we as people of this country who find her sacred should protect her so that she doesn't go back to where she came from which means water must not dry up yes and for that we need to clean the ganga and modi ji has begun the clean clean ganga abhiyan and this show was created especially for for that we've been performing it at the pravasi divas where modi ji himself came for the first opening and so many more shows we have been doing of the the the, the show and i think it has a beautiful message about if you find something sacred especially the rivers of our country we pray to water we pray with water so i think all of it needs to be taken care of sometimes we take things that are to our around us just you know we don't give heed to it and i think it's very important that these things should be to be addressed and ganga show does just that wonderful what a wonder so i will definitely connect with you on my next trip to india if that show is playing we would love to come and watch it where can one get information about it the global audience that is on today where can they find out some information on it well there is i think namami gange uh, something on facebook and uh, you know there's himaji's page is my page everywhere and we can just uh, lots of information about it there is a show on youtube as well one of somebody had put it up as well so there's lots one can watch Okay great that's very very kind thank you and we'll certainly look up some information on it what i have seen a little bit on facebook on instagram it looks amazing and one thing i don't know if the audience has gotten into connection with this if you haven't please connect with uh, uh, sandeep soparkar and uh, on instagram on facebook because there is a little clip and you see sandeep ji as shiva and oh my god you think આ ભગવાન શિવ હિમાલય ઉપરથી પૃથ્વી ઉપર કેવી રીતે આવી ગયા બીકોઝ દેટ ઇઝ ધી એક્ઝેક્ટ પરસેપ્શન ઓફ વન વન વુડ વોન્ટ ટુ સી ભગવાન શ્રી મહાદેવજી ટુ બી એન્ડ વેન સંદીપજી હેઝ ગોટ ધીઝ લોંગ હેર એન્ડ ધ ટાઈગર સ્કીન એન્ડ એવરીથિંગ યુ થિંક ઓ માય ગોડ આ શંકર ભગવાન અહીંયા પૃથ્વી ઉપર મંડ્યા ચાલવા <laughs> thank so, you so much thank yeah, you yeah it's it's an amazing amazing uh, uh, um, depiction of uh, mahadev ji so wonderful we'd love to see that and highly recommend that show to everybody i knew a little bit about it but you made it very clear as to the cause of that show so that makes it even more special thank, thank you for you. that so this is again see the time runs fast and we try to time it for an hour chat session with you but ye ek ghanta 60 minutes to amad nikli jaye yeah so i have a couple more questions and in fact many more but the couple that i really want to 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 ask you is is there any one person who continually inspires you for your upcoming project for whether it be dance or dance for cause or whether it is adopting children is there is there something that you can say aha this is the goal this is the person you know my my grandfather always told me that uh, the competition you have is with your own self mm. no one else around you matters in the business or even otherwise so what i have done today i need to surpass that for tomorrow so my my motivation my my goal is set by me myself not sounding pompous in any way at all but sounding someone who just looks at reality it doesn't matter to me who is doing what work but what's important is what work i have done and how good the next job of mine is from my previous job that i have done most of the time we always compare our jobs with people i did this i did that this one did this one did that you know but we forget that what have you done and how better have you been from your previous self that you have you were before i think that's what inspires me to do more things because i want to just go from above one to the next like i said from 2000 girls adopting to 5000 so that was that was a dream that that suddenly changed my my way and that's what is important as to what i've done yesterday and what i'm going to do tomorrow so but yes there are people who influence hmm. me 
I remember this lady, she's no more, Tao Porshon Lynch, world's oldest ballroom dancer. She died at the age of 102. And my interactions with her have been absolutely amazing. And uh, I think I always keep remembering her lines, her dialogues that she would tell me, her conversations I would have with her. And I think these are certain things which keep making me uh, try to move ahead in life for myself. So I like that. I really like that you're in competition with nobody but yourself. I, I think uh, you've got to better yourself at every point rather than trying to worry about what others are doing. So that's very inspiring to say that that's what you, what you believe in. And it's also nice to see that you are being inspired by a, a human personality, which is, which is also good, the, the lady, as you said, the ballroom dancer. So that's, that's outstanding to hear. Also, when you say inspired by them, um, is there any, any, any lectures that you listen to, motivational, inspirational talks that you listen to, to keep your mind energized at all times? Yes, like I said, I hear a lot of Kabir Das Dohas. And there are times when I dance to it as well. Because when I play those dohas and I'm just dancing, uh, I get more creative. I release all my stress. I release my tensions. I, I uh, tend to accept things which are happening in my life. I also at the same time tend to accept other people who are coming into my life. And I think many, many paths just open up because we are dancing, because I'm dancing. And I make sure I do it every day. Because to me, uh, dance is a part of my daily life. There are beautiful lines of Gopal Das Niraji, which says, Dukh mein nacho, sukh mein nacho, jeevan hai tata thaiya re. Dukh mein nacho, sukh mein nacho, jeevan hai tata thaiya re. Kaun re jane ka burjaye, saanso ki son chidaiya re. Are wah. Wow, wow. So nice. So nicely said. Thank you for that. My God, you're not just an only uh, uh, Sanskrit uh, shloka re readers. You even tell wonderful shairis like this. So, very, <laughs> eh? so this is, the, you are such a multi-talented personality. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, hasn't it just been an outstanding session listening to this great motivational, inspirational personality himself? So I know time definitely flies fast, but I'm going to ask you one final question before I sum this up. What is one message that you would give the audience today that have gone through the COVID pandemic, have been through the tough times, are almost over the bridge now? What's the message that you would give to the society at large? Well, the message I would like to give is... Um... Let me talk about Kabir Das Kavan Doha. Okay. Vriksh kahe paath se sun patte meri baat. Vriksh kahe paath se sun patte meri baat. Is jeevan ki reet hai ek avat ek jat. Oh. So yes, we have lost many people. I have lost so many of my dear friends, relatives as well during this COVID times. We all have. We all have lost not just people, but money. We have lost self-confidence. We have lost so many more things in the mental health. So much more has happened to our lives. But what's important is to pick up the pieces and move back our lives into what was happening. You know, Right? That was happening to us before. Right. But we must remember one thing is that now things have opened up and it's up to us. We have Do we keep it positive or do we keep it negative? And if you keep things positive in life, you'll always move forward. And if you keep things negative in life, you'll always keep sitting in one place. So to me, I believe dance creates positivity, art creates positivity. And if you then you will always fly. Because dance uh, doesn't change who you are really. It unveils and releases and unleashes who you are. So it's very important to just keep dancing all your life. 
That's amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much. Sanibji, that's a, a beautiful message for the audience that's on Facebook, that's on Zoom, and whoever is going to be listening to this at any given point in time. So allow me to sum this up uh, just in the good seven points that I have noted down. Number one that we have learned from this amazing speaker on this inspiration motivational session with Mr. Sandeep Parker is number one, Count on blessings from your elders. Dream, but wake up and act on your dream. Good health will allow us to do some very good work, so look after yourselves. Number four, not to judge people by their cover on how they look. Judge them by their character and what they do. Number five, Mythology inspires people, so dwell in that. You are competing only with yourself, not with others. So set yourself as a challenge with you, not with anybody else. Also, Sanipji says that pick up the pieces, move on, because there is a lot more in life. Last but not the least, fly high, dance always. And these are the motivational messages that we received from our wonderful celebrity guest on our 100th episode of the Minimalism Session. Sandeepji, massive, massive thank you to you for giving us this such strong, positive, and practical messages. Thank you. Thank you so much. Wonderful being on your show. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir, for having me on your 100th episode. It just feels absolutely honored. And I'm glad so many of you came to watch it. And I'm so happy Dr. Batra and uh, Jadeja Ji were there to talk to me as well. And thank you for the invitation. I feel absolutely honored and very humbled. Thank you. Thank you very much. Lekin, dekho, Sandeep Ji, abhi tak khatam nahi hua hai. Achha, okay. Abhi show hai. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for your thank yous. We, we appreciate that. But look, before I end this, uh, and because we have to go to a rapid fire round as yet, just okay. a quick comment. Quick comment. Meena Ben's contact number has been put on the chat box. Manoj by Ruparelia. Thank you for your contact, <laughs> Meena Ben. Please note it down from the chat box. Both of we, us can liaise on this number and connect Sandeep Ji with Manoj by Ruparelia. Yeah, so let me let me move on with that. So, ladies and gentlemen, our minimalism session, the highlight of that is our rapid fire round. Should with I be scared guest for speaker. it? Should I be eh? scared? <laughs> I'm scared. Many could scare many. This is this is all fun, fun and games. So okay. we only say, Sandeep Ji, that we we will make this a very rapid fire round, a okay. short That's question, a one word or a very short statement for the answer. Done. Yeah, so are ready. we ready for the rapid fire round? Yes, ready. Perfect. So welcome to the Mingla uh -huh. session, uh, rapid fire round with Sandeep Sabarkar. Number one, the name Madonna. A uh, woman who can uh, give the youngsters run for their money. Number two, dance for a cause. Uh, once upon a time, my baby, but now the baby of the world. Number three, adopting children. I think we all, every household must do that. One child, one family. The country, India. I can't think of any better place in this country. You guys are un unfortunate that you all are some other place. <laughs> <laughs> India at heart, always. <laughs> Ballroom dancing. That's all I know in life. <laughs> the name Simran Ahuja. <laughs> Simran, are you on the live over here? Are you on the show? Please let us know. <laughs> Your favorite holiday destination, Sandeepji? Ah, no, that's a difficult question to ask. I have many of them, actually. Give me one. Many of them. Uh, I think right now I'm dying to go back to New York, so I'll say New York. Okay. See, if you were given a chance to act with one of the Bollywood actresses, would it be Karina Kapoor, Kiara Advani, Alia Bhatt, or Deepika Padukone? Who would you like to act with? Rekha Ji. Ah, none of these four. <laughs> okay, <laughs> wonderful. She's a legend. Oh, She's my God. Yes. Oh, yes. my God. 
Your favorite Bollywood movie? Uh, of course, her one of her films, Umrah Jaan. Wow, absolutely. Vada Pao ya Dabeli? <laughs> Nothing. I'm too health conscious. None of them. Maybe some apples. Maybe some apples and some watermelon. <laughs> ah, okay, okay. I should have probably put some fruits there. <laughs> uh, one word describing our Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji. A uh, visionary, a total visionary. A your following, uh, your favorite Bollywood male actor. Aha, uh-huh. Akshay Kumar. Your uh, the, the the city, the city Mumbai. Uh, my 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 karma bhumi. The name Mickey Mehta. Ah, my dearest dearest friend. I admire him to death. Okay, rate in order of talent of female actresses. Oh, wow. Katrina, okay. <laughs> Katrina Kaif, Alia Bhatt, Deepika Padukone. Deepika Padukone, uh, Alia Bhatt, and uh, Katrina Kaif. Rate in order of talent for male actors. Varun Dhawan, Siddharth Malhotra, Ranbir Singh. Uh, Ranbir Singh, um, Siddharth Malhotra, and Varun Dhawan. And they'll Only... murder me. I hope they don't hear all this. I hope they're not hearing this show. And they'll murder me, all of them. Huh? <laughs> But all three are very talented. We know that. This is just for <laughs> yeah. the fun of it. Right? <laughs> okay. A comment on the recent uh, Nita Mukesh Ambani Cultural Center. I went there. I think it's one of the most beautiful cultural centers in the world. Yes, I have. I have performed in almost all of them all over the world, and this one is extraordinary. And what Nita Ji has done is absolutely brilliant to open a cultural center which can promote art and culture like no one else has ever done before. Of course, it's the Ambani, so they have really put in all that they have or, or they can or they would want to. And I'm so proud to say that it is it is in my city, Mumbai, and it's open to the world now. So everybody, please come here and perform because it's the best platform to perform on. Excellent. There's some amazing press releases on social media platforms about this center. So guys, watch it, look at it on YouTube. Nita Ambani Mukesh, Anita Mukesh Ambani Cultural Center, one of the I think the epitomes of today. Absolutely. Yeah. Wonderful. So, still not finished. What is your uh, ultimate goal? To dance, dance, and dance, and dance forever. Dance Coffee to the next tea. planet. <laughs> dance to the next planet. Coffee or tea? None of them. I don't drink tea. I don't drink coffee. What do you drink? I just drink water. Pani. Okay. Um, the last question, Doctor uh-huh. Lalit. So does rapid fire round. Very scary. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you so much for being with us, Sandeep Ji. You are such an amazing soul. A virtual big hug to you from my end to you. Um, now I will actually tell Mina Ben till the lady kickstarts and then the lady puts the brakes on the show. The show doesn't end. So Mina Ben, <sighs> may I request you to come online and say a few words. Of vote of thanks to our super speaker, Mina Ben. The floor is yours. Thank you. How are you? Journey to all. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is my pleasant and humble duty to end this session with the heartiest thank you to our trendy Sandeep Subhakar. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, all beautiful soul. Asante sana to all the viewers. On Facebook Live and those who have logged in live on the Zoom session, can't end my you with without saying thank you to my cute cousin, Dr. Lalit Soda, and our co-star. Hi everyone. Hello, Ali. Thank you. Thank you. All. Thank you. Thank you all. Vishwa, come. Go ahead. Goodbye to all, and we see you in Nakuru, Mahendra Bai, and you. You please hold on there. We're going to stop recording, and if anybody would like to speak to you. So, Sandeep Ji, this is my star from my clinic. She's helped me Hello. a lot to get onto the computer. Hi. 
That's Sandeepji and that's Meena Ben. Uh, so she is the lady who puts me on screen. I have no talent or knowledge. <laughs> of, I can only thank talk. you for doing that. You're doing a good job, huh? <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We 